Welcome back to Rogers TV. Uh, daytime Ottawa, as I said, you know, we, we always try to bring up some of these wonderful initiatives, and this one is incredibly important. My next guest is a very personal story. Um, it, you may or may not know, it is National Organ and Tissue Donation Week. I am joined by Glenna Gosowicz, living liver donor and also a former member of the Rogers TV team. So Glenn is like family to us here at Rogers TV. Glenna, welcome to the show. How have you been? Good, thank you. I hope it's not just former. Maybe in the future I'll be back again. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. We would love to have you back. Glenna, let's talk about um, your personal story. Tell us about your journey as a, as a uh, living liver donor. So a little over a year ago, I donated 62% of my liver to a complete stranger. Um, I first thought about becoming a donor when Melnick launched, or they launched the appeal on behalf of Eugene Melnick about five or six years ago. I applied to be a potential donor for him, but was never uh, chosen. And then a few years ago, I was working for Canadian Blood Services and found out that my application was probably just lost in the shuffle. They had been inundated with applications. And I, if I was still interested, I should reapply, which is what I did in, I think, August of 2020. Okay. And, um, or 2020, yeah, 2021, actually. And I went through quite a bit of analysis and, and assessment uh, before they determined that I was uh, able to donate. Uh, so walk me through then, you know, you've gone through that process a, a couple of times now. So um, then obviously the, the, the surgery comes. I'm sure there's, a, as you said, there's a lot of prep before that. But um, what was the surgery process like? Well, I was asleep, so I can't really <laughs> tell you the answer to I hope that. So. Um, yes. Yeah, thankfully. I asked if I could just have a spinal and be awake for it, but they said, no, that wasn't possible. Okay. Um, but it, it's, it's about a six-month process while they while they do every test in the book on you. They okay. will not take a take um, an organ from someone unless they're deemed to be very, very healthy and able to spare. So I had MRI and CT and tons and tons of blood work. And then finally, I was told that I was eligible. At that point, they found a match for me. And then the surgery date was booked. And the surgery itself was, I think, eight hours. Um, I was in the hospital for five or six days. And then I and it was done in Toronto. We don't have this program here in Ottawa. Right. Um, and then I came home and I had about a three week recovery. Sorry, two week recovery. Really? And I was back. Yeah, I was back to work three weeks after my surgery. Well, I, I think you're obviously inspiring our viewers to to donate, but um, you know it's a it's a pretty simple process to, to I imagine to get into the application side. But but just you know reiterate to to people at home and to our viewers why it is so important to donate. Well, right now there are between forty one and forty three hundred Canadians who are waiting for an organ. So there's so wow. many people. Sometimes you see appeals in the news um, where someone like Melnick or just a regular citizen. Uh, requires one. About 75% of those people are actually needing kidneys. And while there are deceased donors out there too, I encourage everybody to to go to beadonor.ca to sign up so that in, in case it comes to that, um, that their organs can be used once they're deceased. But it's just not enough. With so many people needing organs, living donation is a great option as well if people feel like they're in the position to, to be able to, to do that. What advice would you give to somebody that, that is interested? Because I think some people are concerned. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's intimidating. There's, there's no doubt about that. What kind of advice can you give to our viewers? Yeah, there's no doubt it's major surgery and you're and you're taking a risk. And every single time I spoke to a doctor or a nurse at the hospital, they reiterated that I could back out at any time. You know, it wasn't just because I had applied. That didn't mean I was I was um, bound to donating the liver at the time. I could have I could have backed out right up to the day of the surgery. Um, but I, I would just say, look into it, read up on it. Uh, determine if you are interested, determine if you are eligible, if you talk to your doctor about it, if you if you have any concerns. It's not for everybody, but um, but it, if you can spare and if you do feel comfortable, I certainly encourage you to do so. Um, the other thing that I'll say that people can do is there's something called the Living Donor Circle of Excellence. Okay. And I'm going to give a shout out to my employer, which is Export Development Canada. We recently signed up to 
be a part of this donor circle of excellence. So that just means that the employer supports employees if they go through either donation or, or uh, become recipients as well. Just that you know you have a job to come back to, um, that you'll have, uh, you'll receive your payment, your, your salary while you're on leave, that kind of thing. And people can become in, involved and support this initiative even through their workplace. Uh, for those that are, that are interested in finding out more information, where's the best place to go, Glenna? I'd say Canadian Blood Services, so blood.ca. Um, they're kind of the repository for the information. Okay. There's lots of different organizations, you know, because there are different organs involved. One person can donate up to eight organs uh, when, when they're deceased. Um, and if, as living donors, we can donate uh, our liver, our kidney, or even a par small portion of the lung. Um, but because there's so many different uh, organs involved and associations right. involved, uh, Canadian Blood Services is a good kind of central repository. Perfect. Thanks so much, Glenna. We'll be right back after this.